I see the comments and requests and I will act on them. Please remember to follow Geography World channel on Instagram and Facebook using the link shown on the screen. Please remember to like, share with your friends and subscribe. For person wishing to contact me privately, you may email me at geographyworld100 at gmail.com. The link will be posted below. Welcome back to Geographer World channel. For this video, we'll be looking at the 2019 May-June Cape Geography Unit 1 Paper 2. For this video, we will be looking at question number 3. And question number 3 looks at module 2. Now, part A, it asks us to discuss four factors that causes changes in the shape of a storm hydrograph. Now, storm hydrographs are graphs that show how a drainage basin responds to a period of rainfall. So, storm hydrograph, they basically just show us how a drainage basin responds to a period of rainfall. Now, four factors that can basically cause change in the shape of the storm hydrograph is one, precipitation. Now, intense convectional rainfall events would result in a shorter lag time and steep rising limb as the ground is quickly saturated and the surface flow enters the channel. The second factor is temperature. Now, high temperatures result in like very high rates of evapotranspiration and this will basically reduce the amount of discharge that is in the river channel. So these are just many factors that will basically determine how the storm hydrograph will shape or the shape of it, right? Now we can look at the relief or the structure. So the drainage basin with very steep gradient would basically have a shorter lag time and the steeper rising limb as the water rapidly reaches the channel. Now, flatter basins would have a more gentle slope in rising limb with a little bit more longer log time. Now, as it relates to the log time, we're talking about the difference between the peak rainfall and the peak discharge. So, the log time is the difference between the peak rainfall and the peak discharge how long does it take for the, the the river or the channel to be overflooded as opposed to when we had the peak rainfall now we can also look at the soil now we know that the sandy soil they allow for rapid infiltration while the clay because of their small pores they basically reduce infiltration we can look at the size and shape of the basin. Now, small basins would have a very short lag time, but a lower peak discharge, while a larger basin would have a longer lag time, but a higher peak discharge. We can look at the drainage density. So, a large number of tributaries in the upper course would result in a shorter lag time. So, the more tributaries a river has in the upper course, the shorter the log time will be. We can look at the vegetation, that's another factor. Now the vegetation, so the areas that are drainage basin that are very vegetative, they have a very longer log time and a low peak discharge as the plants will intercept and cycle the water, reducing surface runoff and increasing infiltration. And we can also look at human activities. We can look at the abundance of impermeable surfaces, channelized, ch channelized drains, and wastewater outlets can greatly increase the peak discharge and shorten the lag time as water moves rapidly over these surfaces. So for this, we sh for the for question number three. Some of the factors that you can look at are the precipitation type, the temperature, the relief or structure, soil, size and shape of the basin, drainage density, vegetation, and human activities. Let us look at part B to this question. So part B asks us to explain how coral reefs are affected by changes in sea level. How does sea level affect coral reefs? Now, 
sea level rise would affect corals because corals grow best at a depth of 20 to 40 meters deep, which allows for the penetration of sunlight, thus allowing the temperature of the water to be between 25 to 27 degrees Celsius. Now, when the sea level rises, it basically allows the water to become deeper. Thus, the sunlight will not be sufficiently reaching the corals. Now, the depth of the water also affects the temperature as temperature decreases with the depth of water. So, deep waters more than 100 meters with limited sunlight would basically limit coral growth. So, once the sea level rises, it will definitely affect the coral growth. It will basically retard the growth of the corals because they will not be getting the adequate sunlight that is required and the temperature for the water will also change. Once you're able to explain, you should get your four marks. Question C asks that you write an essay discussing three factors that shape limestone landscape. Now, some of the factors that shape the limestone landscape is the rock structure and the lithology of the area so the permeability of the limestone basically allows weathering to take place deep underground we can look at the water in the area so water is a major control and the dissolution of limestone now surface and underground water all contribute to the erosion of limestone so the more water with, is present within the limestone region the more carbonation that will take place. We can also look at the amount of dissolved CO2. Now, the rate of absorption of carbon dioxide by water, it increases with the decrease in temperature. However, the rate of carbon carbonation is increased in warm areas. So once the area has a high temperature, it therefore means that the carbonation rate will increase. We can look at the climate of the region. And the climate of the region with the combination of temperature and precipitation regime has a great influence on the occurrence and rate of chemical weathering. Dry cold climate, slow chemical weathering, even though the concentration of carbon dioxide may be high. So in areas that receive a high temperature and a high precipitation rate, it means that carbonation will take place more rapidly. We can also look at the vegetation. So vegetation covered areas in the in the vegetated covered limestone region, um, they help to basically shape the area because vegetation basically contributes to chemical weathering by the production of humic acid from the decayed organic matter. So even though this is not as rapid as carbonation, it does help to shape the limestone area and remember that vegetation it helps to slow down or intercept rainfall which means that uh, it allows for a lot of in it allows for a lot of infiltration to take place within the limestone environment we are at the end of this video thank you for watching and please remember to like share subscribe and turn on your post notification bell in order to receive more videos like these. Leave comments below suggesting topics that you would want me to present on. In the comment section below, comment the name of your school and the territory for a shout out in my next video. Until then, bye!